Episode 5 of Blue Planet is called Seasonal Seas, and it's about seas that you find in the temperate regions of the world. The first major bit of footage we get is about grey seals. We see a grey seal colony in Nova Scotia. We see that the adults have their pups in the worst time of year, the winter, but that is just so when the summer comes, the pups are old enough to actually be able to feed at sea, because the parents just leave and the pups are left on the beach. They only get suckled for like 11 days or something, and then they have to basically rely on their fat reserves for 5 weeks before they can actually go in the sea. It establishes how harsh life can be at the temperate regions, but also how the benefits of it. Obviously we get harsher seasons and nicer seasons, and that's what this sequence really highlights I think, so it's a really good job. Then we kind of dive into the biggest part of the temperate seas, which is the phytoplankton. Phytoplankton's everywhere, it actually stains the sea green. There's large green pockets around the world that you can see from space. Really cool, that attracts quite a lot of animals. Copepods are discussed in a lot of detail because they're the kind of basis for a lot of big food webs. Jellyfish go for them. The jellyfish is quite interesting because we just think of jellyfish as things that just sort of coast through the ocean, just go on with the flow. And for the most part they are. And we know that they're a threat, but that's mostly because they can sting us. We don't ever associate them as being predators. This sequence established that they are actually quite efficient at catching copepods, so that's quite good. Then we see basking sharks. Seeing basking sharks is always great for me because they're an animal that really is technically on my doorstep, but that I've never seen and would like to see. And then we look at kelp. So kelp forests are also very abundant at the temperate regions, specifically in the northern hemisphere. We see that they're really good for sea otters, which we kind of know. We see the sea otters basically eating urchins, we know that. Again, stuff we've already seen before in other programs, but you know, still quite nice to see. We see other things in the kelp forests, like Garibaldi fish, amphipods. We do spend a bit of time with the amphipods. They actually eat the kelp and will actually live in it. The harbour seal sequence was quite funny, because the seal's just sleeping underwater, it kind of looks a bit gormless. Then all of a sudden it gets woke up by another seal. Quite funny. We see that they're trying to establish dominance ahead of the mating season. They don't fight, they just sort of make noises underwater to try and spook each other, I guess. Whoever kind of is the loudest, I guess, wins. We see a, a sea slug called Janulus. The way he introduces it, it's almost like that's his name or something. And this other sea slug goes for it, but it's able to curl up into a ball and escape. So, again, weird stuff. Sea slugs, quite weird creatures. Uh, we don't see a lot of them in these kind of programs. And then we see lobsters. We see this lobster going to its favourite patch of seabed. But all these other lobsters are there already. Bad form. You don't take someone's favourite bit of seabed, you know. It's like a golden rule. We see crabs as well. The actual shots of the crab make them look quite intimidating. Again, another animal we see quite a lot. So it's good to get a new take on them. But we see that this octopus basically gets the crab. And the fact that the crab is portrayed is quite intimidating. And then we see how small it is compared to the octopus. It puts it into perspective. And it actually makes the octopus seem more intimidating as well. So that was quite effective actually. Then we talk about salmon. So the salmon obviously gather around the coast before they head up river. And it's quite interesting to see salmon in the sea. Because we almost always see them going up river. We very rarely ever see them in the sea. And as they're in the sea, we see that they're prey to the salmon shark, which is an animal that had never been filmed before and had rarely been seen before. And it's a really interesting one. It's I have seen salmon sharks pop up in other things, but this is the most in-depth look we get at them. They really do look like great white sharks, and they are closely related to them. They're both mackerel sharks. We see a lot of shots of them grabbing the salmon, and as we see in the diaries, that's actually just fish that were caught that were already dead that are on a line. I gathered there was a bit of trickery going on, but I'm kind of glad they addressed it in the diaries. Then we look at herring. So this is yet another bait ball. It's the sixth bait ball sequence in the series so far. We see diving birds like auklets and mur and gulls as well. So to be fair, it is just birds. It's very bird heavy. It's not as good as the Cory Shearwaters a couple of episodes ago, but it's all right. I will say that I do feel a little bit fatigued with Babel sequences. We talk about dogfish as well. We see a dogfish emerging from an egg off the coast of Scotland. There's this hooded sea slug as well we see. It's kind of cool. There's a lot of things in here. I feel like we just get snippets of them, but they're not doing that much, to be honest. They're not, they're not going to stand out that much. The dogfish was quite good, but I feel like a lot of those sequences, I was kind of like, I will probably forget these, and I probably will. Uh, and then we go to the Southern Hemisphere. Briefly, we don't spend a lot of time in the Southern Hemisphere. We spend a bit of time around Tasmania. We see a couple of things, like the handfish. We spend a bit of time with Australian squid, which are just mating. We see their babies come out. That's quite nice. Again, that was a sequence I was like, okay, squid, cool. But I actually found it was quite good by the end. It was one of the more engaging sequences of the episode, so I quite like that. The leafy sea dragon as well. Not another animal we've seen since this series came out, but it was probably the first time anyone saw them. And to be fair, it's basically the same as every other sequence about leafy sea dragons that's come after it. So I liked it just as much, so yeah. And then we go back to the Northern Hemisphere, to Norway, where we see herring again. Again, this is another bait ball, kind of. Kind of a bait ball. It's a bit different. We see orcas hunting herring, and it's really cool as well. Again, orcas. It's a nice change considering the last time we saw orcas. It was a pretty brutal sequence. This 
a bit more wholesome. And we see that they smack the herring, because herring aren't actually that easy to catch for some reason, even though we saw the, the birds make short work of them earlier. So orcas apparently just aren't as good as birds at catching fish, so you know, who'd have thought? Stick to whales. Uh, and we see that they stun them with their tails, Quite cool, and these grab the ones that are stunned. That's a good sequence, it's one of the more memorable ones I would say. And in the diaries is all about the people filming the salmon sharks. Not just them filming it, but actually the people studying them. That was really good. Again, this is probably my favourite diaries of the series so far, just because it was so interesting. I liked seeing the people uh, catching the sharks and actually tagging them. That was really cool. But overall, this episode is good. It's, it's a good episode. There hasn't been a bad one of the series yet. But there haven't been too many great ones, I'll say. We're over halfway through now, so that's maybe a little bit disappointing. But um, yeah, good stuff. Highlights, probably the salmon sharks, to be honest. I really like the orcas stunning the, the fish as well, though. And there were some kind of funny sequences, again, like like the, the sea slug called Janulus. That was quite cool. So what did you think of this episode? What were your highlights? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, as ever, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Or don't, it's fine. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week for the Coral Seas episode. Uh, um, never seen Coral before, so we'll see if we get any new stuff there. And uh, see you later, and goodbye.